Hello and welcome round to my house. Now I'm joined today in the kitchen by two of the West Country's best chefs and together we're going to be serving up an eight course meal of delicious food for an award winning actress who starred in some of the finest plays, films and TV shows Britain has ever produced. The sun is shining because she's en route. I'll see you in the kitchen in just a minute. Morning. Are you coming in then? Good morning, and what a show we've got lined up for you today. I'm already smiling because one of my guests has just joined me now, right? We're joined throughout the morning by a true national treasure when actress Alison Stedman drops by the house. <laughs> Looking forward to that one. And we follow in the footsteps of Alison and a Gavin's and Stacey stars where my food adventures takes me to Barry Island. Top chef Paul Ainsworth will be here and Romy Gill. Uh, and they'll be dropping by with some fantastic dishes of monkfish and chicken in a little while. And there's a masterclass in sardines coming your way as well. And I'll be sharing some ideas of recipes with vegetables as we get involved in ITV's Eat Them to Defeat Them campaign. And if that wasn't enough, the reason why I'm smiling, I'm also delighted to be joined by a great friend of the show and mine, who is without, without doubt one of the greatest foragers in the entire area of Donny in Doncaster. It's Alicia Vasey. Yeah. Good morning, good morning. Great to have you on the show. Now you've been you've you've been foraging. You brought some amazing stuff with you. So are we going to talk about we're going to talk about the seaweed as well today. Oh different bits and pieces at banging season. I seasons. have been scratching around Dump Beach for you, because I mean it's still early in the season. Right. Right. So but I'm going to do I'm going to do we got some lovely sort of sole over here. I'm going to do some fish with a lovely seaweed butter, which you've kindly made the butters for me as well. We're going to do some scallops. But first of all, tell us about the the seasons for seaweed, the do's and don'ts and that kind of stuff before we get into the the yeah, ingredients yeah, yeah. itself. Right, so. okay, so seaweed, all right? Yep. So you want nice rocky beaches. Yeah. And, and, and they tend to be down really steep hills up my end at Woods. Right. So what you're looking at is lots of boulders. You want sort of like rock pools and things like that. That's where your freshest seaweed is going to be. All right, some of them that you need to go out on little day boats on, but we're not doing that. So <laughs> what you need to be aware of is take a whistle with you, because I tell you what, it's right slippy, and if you're not wearing stuff like rock hoppers on your feet, right. and you fall over, you could be 20 yards away from beach proper, nobody can see you. Take a whistle in case you sort of like fall over, because it happens a lot, it happens, happens more than you think. Yeah. And just make sure you wear something bright and visible, because when you're on beach... Do you need you know, permission for this, or...? Do you know what, there's, um, you know, technically, right, if you're getting it for yourself, right. you're fine. If you, you know, you're doing it commercially, you know, you have to get all your permissions in place and landowner permissions. But actually, if you're getting just bits and pieces for yourself, you're absolutely fine. OK, that's that's not a problem. It's become really, really popular, isn't it, seaweed? As a, I mean, for health benefits and everything else. So, yeah. yeah. Honestly, what, are you, what are you looking at me like for? You're looking as if... Why oh, is he using oil? I'm just going to... I thought it was just a posh bottle, isn't it? I'm, I'm just using a little bottle. bit of oil to cook the fish, then I'm going to get on and use your butter. Don't panic, because I know you brought your own butter. We're going to take... Listen, I made that from scratch. I know you did. This I is mean, what... I mean, I actually made the butter bit as well. I didn't just get a pack from the supermarket. Oh, you actually made the, the, the raw material, the whole yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was using this posh thing, right, and that was rubbish, and then I got my old blender out, and that did job. Right. <laughs> So we're just going to take our fish, and I'm just going to pan fry this, but then I'm going to take it out, leave it to rest. Yeah. So I'll lose this to one side. So tell us about the the, the seaweed that we've got in front as well over here. So you've you've made some amazing Ooh. stuff as well, but tell us tell us about these different colours and what we have in here. This one first of all. Okay. So that's dried red dulse. Yeah. So this is it fresh. Okay. And you will just find that on the beach. All right. And what's the difference between that and say kelp? Is it? Right, so kelp looks like a belt, all right? So you've much got thicker, much bigger. Do it's you think? thicker, right? But it looks like it's, it's about it's about two and a half, three inches thick, and it comes in a strip, and it's really distinguishable because it literally looks like a brown leather belt. Yeah. Whereas this is all scratchy. Yeah. Right, and you hold it up, and it's got like a red tinge to it. You can see the red tinge. The kelp is really green. Well, not bright green, but sort of like a dull green. But it looks like an old leather belt. Now, when you get sugar kelp, it still looks like a belt, but it's got like um, like a ripple pattern effect on it. Whereas like normal kelp, it's just sort of like flat, and it literally looks like a piece of old leather. Right. Look at this as a little dish. Look, this is your seaweed butter. Look at that. Oh, it's that beautiful, really isn't nice, it? That. With a little bit of the wild garlic with it as well. Yeah, it's nice. How good does that one look? Patent. 
So that's the, yeah, exactly. So that's that's that one done. You can link that recipe if you want. And then I'm going to do one with scallops as well. So moving down, what what else is what else in the seaweed family that can people look for as well? This time of year, right, so what I haven't brought in was some sea lettuce, but we should be getting that about now. And that's that bright green slimy stuff that sticks to rocks. Dead easy to see. Why haven't you brought that in? Because I couldn't get any old of any, because of storms and everything. All right, OK. All right. right. But I did have some dried, which is on the end there. And if you have a... If you taste that bit, you know that flaky stuff in that dish? This one. Yeah. If I taste that, don't smell it, because it's horrible. It tastes nice. Mmm. Do you like that? Yeah, that's all right. It's, got, isn't it? it's actually got a flavour, hasn't it? Right. Well, so that's got the beautiful name, really elegant name of gutweed. Right. Gutweed. Gutweed. What's the after effects on it? <laughs> Don't even want to know for the Can you tell me later? <laughs> <laughs> <Go on. laughs> What's it? Actually, no. I tell you what it is. It's like a tube, and it's really hard to, like, you've got to really wash it out. I think it's called the guts of it because it's like it gets loads of sand down the tube. Right. right. It's not processing out. It's just how it is. Okay. But the sea lettuce is sort of like the same family, and that's that's flat, and you can like crispy deep fry that. It's really nice fried. That's actually really nice fried. So we've got different types of seaweed. Now, they're so versatile. I'm just using them where you've got the, the amazing yeah, butters yeah. that you've got in here. This is the one that you... That's my favourite. Which is this one. No. No, that's the sugar kelp one. The sugar kelp one is my favourite. So sugar kelp one. I would go with that one. OK, we're going to go with that one with the scallops. So I think with the sweetness of the scallops, I think the it's got that umami effect, hasn't it? And okay. then you get that sweetness. Now, those people who are not near the beach, there's still stuff available, still stuff in season now, just coming up. Yeah particularly chef's love, and we're going to get onto the scallops as well, yeah. chef's love wild garlic. So tell me about this amazing wild garlic. We'll put it in front of us here so you can see this. But this is your amazing wild garlic. Oh, tell everybody know, about yeah. this then. Where, where does it grow? How does it grow? Right, what? OK, get yourself down to woodlands. It should be shooting through now. Doesn't matter if it snows now. Doesn't matter if it's icy. It will keep going. And then that will keep going all the way till about the end of May, a bit further up in Scotland. So it starts down in Cornwall in January, starts moving its way up like two-week increments up and down the country, gets to Scotland, and then you've got this huge, like, swathes of wild garlic, OK? And that's absolutely fantastic. So it's really pungent. You know it's pungent. What about permission for, for wild garlic? And foraging for wild garlic. Just land us permission do you know what? again. Do you want me to get technical, right? Yeah, because I'll get yeah. technical. Because I was looking at section three of the Theft Act of 1968. Okay. Well, you said. Right. Well, okay. All yeah. Right. You know. Okay. I did yeah. do law. Okay. Right. And if you collect it for yourself, you know, it's not taking anything, so you're absolutely fine doing it. If you're taking it for yourself, I have to get permissions because we pick it by the country ton, you know? Right. So um, some people are quite happy that I take it because, like, you don't want cows eating it because it, like, goes through to the milk. OK. okay. You know, so that's pretty horrible. You don't want garlic-flavoured milk. That's right. not nice. Some people might do, but... Well... Not maybe. me. Not me, but some people <laughs> might do. <laughs> some people might do. Yeah. So there's your wild garlic. Yeah. Now, tell me about this, cos chefs are raving about this stuff. Tell me about this. They are, actually, aren't they? All right, OK, so... When we go up to places like Hong Kong, this will establish inland, right, but if you're actually going for the first time, Get yourself out to the coast. This grows absolutely everywhere. In fact, some councils like have contracts out to put pesticide on it. Right. right? And this is Alexander's. These are Alexander's. So this was named after um, Alexandria, and it's like the parsley of Alexandria. It doesn't taste like parsley, but they call it horse parsley. I don't yeah. know why they call it parsley, but it's not like parsley. It's spicy. It's really spicy. So it's got this after effect, and it just has like a bit of a kick to it. Do you want to have a nibble on that? Go on, I'll have a nibble of it. That's my dog, by the way, Ralph and Barking in the background. But That's all right. So, so what bit do you eat? Do you, what, any of it. Any, any of it. it, yeah. Go for go for the stalk. I'm going to go for the stalk, yeah. actually. That's nice. It's also got um, a nemesis, which is... Um, it's great flavour, this, isn't it? Yeah, it's great flavour. Yeah, hemlock water dropwort, which is really, really deadly. So, best thing to do, get a book, look at the pictures. Not necessarily Google it, because even I've known them to get it wrong as well. All right. Uh, really, you know, it's like all, like I say all the time, get somebody to take you out to do it because it grows in roughly the same place as well. But the hemlock water drop water, it's got like um, big white roots on it, like 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 pars, like parsnips, which are rounded in the column, dead man's fingers. Never eat them either. So if you ever dig it up and it's got these beautiful white roots, don't touch it. They will kill you.
Wow, wow, wow. So, yeah. and, and you can do so many different things with it. You've been busy baking. Explain to us what's got on here while I serve up these amazing scallops. Right, OK. So, what I've done is I've done some red dulse bread and I chopped off the end to make sure that it was all right. So, you can try that as well. You can mop some of that um, butter up in it, can't you? Yeah, I can do that. Honestly, I've done a cracking job on bread myself. Yeah, you're quite modest as well, actually, to be honest with you. Well, no, it's because sometimes right, I, get, <laughs> I get it all... You know, like, the crumb gets really close, right, and it's really tight. And then I remember somebody saying, like, Keep going with the water. Don't worry about it being too wet. Yeah. You know, when you're making bread. Yeah. Right. So it actually turned all right. It's not that I'm bragging. It's because I'm actually like well chuffed and relieved. So have you put the you put the dried seaweed no, in there? No, I put the fresh. Fresh seaweed. No, I put the I put the fresh red dulse in there. And it's not just that. that. You've done the, what's with the jelly that you've got in here? Right. Okay. So that's a set of jelly with some. Uh, that's again. That's got some red dulse in it, and it's got some pomegranate. And what I've done is I've done some. Um, I'm right into these super Tuscan gear wines at the moment, and like, the, yeah. Is that nice? Right, then. Is that proper nice? Right, then. That's good. I haven't tasted any. I was just hoping to see what you thought. Oh, thanks. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia Vasey, everybody. Yeah. Right, still to come, we've got uh, dishes from Chef Paul Ainsworth and Romy Gill. An amazing Alison Stedman will be here in the house very shortly. But don't go anywhere, because after the break, I'll be getting involved in this year's Eat Them to Defeat Them campaign for ITV. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. Now, I'll be giving you a little masterclass in sardines a little later, and I'll be chatting to actress Alison Stedman very shortly. But first, every year we get involved in ITV's Eat Them to Defeat Them campaign that aims to get more and more kids, and adults as well, eating more veg. Now, how hard can it be to get kids to eat more veg? So we thought we'd uh, join the campaign this year by helping out some parents who need a little bit of help in the kitchen. So we should be joining the line now by uh, Grace and Shalom. How are you doing, guys? Yeah, How are you? Good. Now, I know one of your favourite veg. This is your favourite veg, isn't it, really? This one over here. Of course. Yes. This is your corn. I'm going to show you what to do with this. It's amazing as well. Uh, so stay on there and you can watch. And hopefully we should be on the line by now uh, Dan and uh, Ezra. Are you there, Dan and Ezra? Can I see you? Yeah. I can see we you there. We are. Hi. Now, Dad, you've got, you've got a big family to feed. We have. I think there's... Uh... We, there's five of us, so oh, yeah. and a dog, and we're all, you know, I'm fairly tall, so we're a fairly, fairly quick-growing family. <laughs> Sounds going to be pretty good to me. Now, what kind of food do you like there, uh, Ezra? So I've got a selection of different veg in front of me. If you could pick anything off here, what's, what's your favourite veg? How can I improve the favourite veg? Carrots. Carrots are your favourite. Well, actually, uh, carrots are one of the things we're going to start off with. So I know all you guys are watching now. The, this is carrots, and I'm going to show you my favourite, favourite way of cooking carrots, all right? So with the carrots, what you do is you don't have to peel them. What you can do is cook them as quick as possible. So that with, with carrots, you take the smaller ones, Dad, because the smaller ones are sweeter than the bigger ones. So with the smaller ones, what you can do is do, just take a pan over here, and what you do is you cook them in a tiny, tiny bit of water. Now, you can almost see this in here. You almost lightly cover them. So normally when you're cooking carrots, you put loads and loads of water in it. You don't need that with carrots. You need as little water as possible, all right? What you do is you put them in there, a little pinch of sugar, a little pinch of salt, not too much. And then what you do is this. This is amazing. Now, hide this from Ezra, but he'll, he'll like the flavour of this. This is star anise. Uh, this is amazing. It tastes beautiful. Just put one of them in there and you cook it very, very quickly in there. Now, you can add a little thing like butter. You can put a little bit of thing like oil if you wanted to. That can go in there. Even a little bit of uh, olive oil in here is amazing. Just a little bit of veg oil. Just a little bit of oil in there. And rapidly, 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 we cook these. It's going to take about three or four minutes to cook. Now, also, we're then going to take our corn. Now, shalom. This is the corn. This you will love, all right? So what we do is we take our corn and we cut this like this. And we cut it, we take it off the husks. Because you know what it's like, Shell, and when you're eating corn, it all gets stuck in your teeth. Yes. You know that? That's the one you get all, you end up picking out your teeth forever. This one, you can stop that, all right? So what you do is you get a nice hot pan. Your mum has got one behind you. I can see that already on the hob, waiting ready. <laughs> Poised when we finish this, so she's gonna make it for you later. You get a very, very hot pan. Get her to get it nice and hot, like that. Little bit of oil, mum. 
in there, just a little bit of oil in the pan. And with the corn, normally when you're boiling corn, it takes 10 minutes, doesn't it? Something like that. Yeah. Right, yeah. watch how quick this is. A little bit of oil in the pan. You take the corn, you pop it in here. Now the clock's ticking. You're going to take this. This is going to take no more than probably a minute, something like that. While that's happening, I'm going to get one of my favourite veg, because you've had your turn. This is my turn. I'm going to take this. Do you like this? Broccoli? Yes, I like broccoli. Good, you like broccoli. Well, broccoli, this is called sprouting broccoli, all right? Don't get the bigger ones, get the small stalks. Again, lovely and sweet, delicious. A little bit of olive oil over the top. No salt and pepper. A mum, you don't even need a pan for this one. You just need a grill. Take the whole lot, put it under the grill. It's going to take about two to three minutes to cook under the grill. Pan, you've got to wait for it to boil, everything else. Two to three minutes. Back over to our nice little bit of corn over here. Now, you can see that in the pan. You see that? This is almost cooked now, because then what you add, this is amazing. Do you like, do you like pancakes and maple syrup? Yes. Yeah. You like? Yes, yeah. you see. So this is the sweet corn version of pancakes, all right, without the pancakes. Then what we do is you take your maple syrup, pour that in there, just a couple of tablespoons, all you need. Whiz it around like that, on the heat, straight off into a bowl, sweet corn, done. Slightly charred, how does that look? Impressed? Oh, I can see I'm gonna have to work yeah. harder. Right. <laughs> Happy with that? <laughs> it's great. Yeah. That's in it's the oven. Great. That's in there. It's the delicious. carrots are cooking. Right, do you like chips? Both of you? Yeah. Do you like chips? Now rather than do chips with potatoes, all right? Why don't you do chips? Do you like courgettes? No. No, well I'm gonna make you like courgettes, so just listen. So we're gonna take our courgettes. Now courgettes are amazing. If you, if you thinly slice them, all right? So you nice, your corn's done. I'll check the broccoli. Broccoli's about a minute away, all right? Take those nice little bits of courgettes. Then what we do is put the courgettes into milk. Then we put them into flour. Now you're gonna like these. You see, I know you'll like these. Promise you'll like these. So into the milk, into the flour, roll them around and deep fry them, like chips. Now do you like them? I, re I reckon it's one to try for sure. I'm going to taste it first. You've got to taste We've it got an arm, yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm trying my best here. Look, you just pop them in the fryer, <laughs> right? They're going in. Meanwhile, I've got my carrots over cooking over here. The broccoli's nearly ready. The carrots are done, look. These are nearly there. Broccoli's done, look. How does that look? Okay. What yeah, temperature yeah, yeah. did you put the broccoli Hot. At? Really, really hot. That's what you want. So, Grace, you want, the, you want the, the grill as hot as you can possibly get. And you cook this very, very quickly, all right? Then you just put the broccoli. Look at the colour of it. You haven't overcooked it. It's beautiful and delicious. Lovely and sweet. You can put a little bit of lemon on there if you wanted to. That's that one done, all right? Now, do you guys like peas? Yes. Help me out there. Peas, peas. Do you like? Do you like? Do you like onions? Yeah. Yes. We're getting there. Yeah. Now, one more question. You've got to say yes to this. Do you like lettuce? No. Yes. No. Yes. No. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to put all these lot together. All right. Yes. Yes. You like it. That's the right answer. You are learning while we're doing this. Look at this. There's your nice little bit of lettuce. All right. We're going to get a pan on the stove. Nice and hot. The carrots are nearly there. My lovely bit of fries. Look at these, these chips. Look at these. I'm going to stop here now, look. The deal is, by the way, I'm not going to let you eat those until you eat the rest of this. <laughs> That's the deal. That's the deal. That's the deal. Right, look. They look like real chips now. Now they look like real chips. A little bit of salt over the top. We've now got, look at these chips. How good do they look? Good. Happy with that? 
Next, carrots are done. How good do they look? Good. So with these, what you what you can do, guys, is you can serve the entire thing. So you get that, and you get this wonderful sweet little sauce with it as well. But the carrots, look, cooked in record time. And you've got this amazing little sauce with the olive oil, a little bit of water, produces a lovely glaze. And all this is lovely. It's lovely, nice and sweet, because the carrots are nice and sweet. Touch of sugar, that's what you want. Next, right, all your favourite, peas, right? This one in here. Yeah. I'm working now. A little bit of oil. A <laughs> little bit of onions. Mum, Dad, you can buy these onions from the supermarket. They come in the freezer section. You don't even have to peel them. They're frozen in a bag. All right? They go in there. Nice hot pan. Lettuce. Look at the lettuce going in. Fresh peas or from a freezer. They go in. Now you're liking this. Now I'm doing something you like. Look. This goes in here, mixy mixy. Like that. And then all you need with this, apart from the oil, is water. Two tablespoons of water is what you want. That's all it needs. Now, do you like hummus? Yes. Hummus. Yes. hummus. yes. You like it when you dip the hummus in? Right. Right. Let me into a secret. Does your mum and dad make hummus or do they buy it? Sometimes both. Sometimes he can't be bothered. We I know, buy, I get the we feeling, don't make. Ezra. <laughs> Just can't be bothered, right? <laughs> so what we're going to do is going to take some chickpeas. So these chickpeas come out of a can, all right? So when you go in the supermarket, get some chickpeas. This stuff is called tahini. It's sesame seed paste. And mum, dad, don't put too much in because it becomes quite bitter, all right? And what we do to offset the bitterness, we add a little bit of lemon. Touch of that. Now, you can blend it as it is. But then, we'll just sort out a piece. What you got in there? Look at these. Look at these. Look at these. Look at these. Now, which one of you like peas? Shalom, like peas? Fantastic. What about yeah, these? Yes. How about that? Yeah. Fresh peas in two minutes. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, look a bit more excited. Next. <laughs> Next. I'm working here. Next, we got a little bit of garlic. You like garlic? Uh, it's yeah. too late, it's gone in it. Right, next. <laughs> We've got some red peppers got in there. Do you like peppers? You must like peppers, no? Yeah. Do you like these? Look at these. So, Mum, Dad, you can get these from the supermarket. They, they come in, these are brilliant. Or you can roast them as well. Nice little bit of red peppers. But if you blend, the chickpeas, very, very simple to make a little bit of hummus. If you blend all that lot together, you've got this amazing little, little dip that you can then dip your different veg in as well. It's absolutely fantastic like that, all right? So you can take that, blend it. You see it blending away nicely? You've got a blender? Yeah. Fantastic. You've got a blender. Take this. <laughs> Another one. I'm running out of bowls here, but look. Look at that. How's about that one? Chickpea hummus. Do you like that? Yeah. Good one. I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to end up with one more before I let you go. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. This is one more. Tomatoes. Do you like tomatoes? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Love them. Tomatoes, these are amazing, all right? What you want to do with these tomatoes, just very, very quickly, is take yourself some bread, like that. Nice little bit of bread. And we're going to toast this, all right? On here, just a little bit of toast. You got that? This is a hot little griddle. You got that? Yeah. yeah. Next, what we're going to do... Now, you need your, your mum and dad for this bit, because what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a grater and a sieve, and we're going to grate the tomatoes. Wow, that's good. Wow, that's see this? But just the skins. So I can see you watching this, Dan. So... Yeah. 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 So are you probably... Have you ever been to Spain on your holes? Have you ever been to Spain on your holidays? Or you've... No. Yeah. Yes, you've been to yeah. Spain. So you know when you go to a, a place and you have those lovely tomatoes on toast? 
in Spain. Yeah. This is all it is, all right? Is this how you make it? This is how you make it. See, you're learning as well as the daughter. Look. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what we're going to do is we just mix that together like that. We don't want the, the skins. So you grate it without skins and you end up with this pulp. All right? We've got a little bit of toast here, which is perfect. We then take our nice little bit of tomatoes, like that. This is how you make it. Now, kids, just do that. Shalom, do that. Do that. Mum, Dad, this in the freezer, amazing for a Bloody Mary. Makes the most amazing ice cream. <laughs> now do that. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't hear it. No, you didn't. No, you didn't hear it. I did hear it. What did I say? I did hear it. What did I say? You said you're going to put that in the freezer. You heard it. That's cheating. Right. So a little bit of garlic on here. I did not hear though. A little bit of garlic on here, rubbed over the top. And then what you do, Mum, Dad, touch of oil in the tomatoes. Now, the great thing about that, you've got the juice, you don't want the seeds, a bit of black pepper, a little bit of salt in there as well. And if you get a spoon, mix that lot together and put that on your toast. All you need now, guys, is sunshine. And then you'll be back in Spain eating your tomatoes on toast. Seven dishes, all done. I feel like I've been officially tested. Are you happy with that? <laughs> Yeah. Um, All right, well, best of luck with it anyway. Say, Jay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Remember, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear that at all. Uh, now, if you want some more family family. No, you didn't it. hear it. You didn't hear it. <laughs> if you want some more recipes, head to the Eat Them to Defeat Them website. Uh, all the details should be on the screens right now. Right, still to come, we're giving you mass cast in Sadies. And Jess, Paul Ainsworth, and Romy Gill will be cooking for us very shortly. But don't go anywhere, because after the break, I'll be joined in the house by Governor Stacey Star, Alison Stedman. I'll see you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, coming up, me and my mini are heading to the beaches of South Wales as there's a masterclass in sardines on its way as well. But first, I'm here with an actress who's become a true legend from her starring roles in Abigail's Party, Shirley Valentine, and, of course, Gavin and Stacey. It's the brilliant, the wonderful Alison Stedman! Yay! Hello! Icon, I should call you as well. Icon as well. Welcome to the house. Uh, now, to celebrate you've been here, um, I know you love your food. I wanted, to, I wanted to do this dish. This is my favourite, favourite thing ever, ever in the history of food. To cook. Really? Yeah. Wow. This, this would be it. And, and I'm going to do it with all the garnishes that I love. I'm going to do it with cream spinach, with a little bit of nutmeg. I've got some lovely boiled potatoes over here with a little bit of butter and a little bit of parsley. But Dover sole manier. It's a real, wow. real classic. We're going to fill it the Dover sole. You can do it whole if you want to do it. A little bit of flour. Pan fry it. I'm going to do a simple little manier sauce as well with it. So we're going to start off with a beautiful Dover sole. Predominantly, this comes from uh, Hastings. That's where most of the Dover sole comes from. And sadly, uh, most of it gets exported. A lot, most of it. I say 90-odd percent of it gets exported. It's a crazy amount. So when you're sat in Spain or when you're in Italy and you're enjoying your Dover <laughs> sole, that kind of stuff, it could have come from Hastings. There's, there's really a distinct possibility it will have come from there. But not far out in Hastings, because the, it's Pebbly Beach, and that's why it sort of hides in sort of the, 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 the bottom of the ocean like this. But it's a beautiful, beautiful fish. And one you've got to cook it really, really simply, because uh, it is the flavour is absolutely fantastic, and serve it with this lovely little butter sauce. So, Alison, where do I start with your career? <laughs> uh, where do I start with your career? Do you know what? I, I didn't know where to start, really. I'm going to get on to... We'll get on to the Gavin and Stacey thing later, but what I want to talk about is the early days, when you, when you started out and you wanted to be a, 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 an actor, actress, and you wanted to start out, what did, you, what did your parents think? What, what, was the, what was the defining moment where you went, this is what I want to do? Because you used to sort of... Didn't you used to mimic teachers and stuff like that? Yeah, I was constantly mimicking teachers and, and I would walk behind them in the corridor and do their walks and... I don't know, my whole life was just spent pretending to be somebody else. Right. <laughs> I, I kind of... Was, I, was this a, a practical joke sort of sense? Because you've gone on to do tons of comedy as well. Was this... Or was this as a... Yeah, but I used to entertain the class. I mean, I, I, I went to an um, all-girls grammar school and... 
you know, I wasn't very good at school. I mean, I have to say, I was pretty lazy and, I, you know, I didn't do well in exams, but um, I used to entertain the class, pretend to be the teachers, and, of course, they'd walk in and then I'd quickly sit down, you know, yeah. <laughs> not get caught. But, yeah, my whole life, I've just found it fun. Just fun being somebody else. Because you've gone on to, in terms of your career. I mean, I mean, I, like I said, where do I start with your career? But you've gone on to do so many, so many different things, from, from theatre to, to film, but managed to carry that all through your career, really, but also comedy at the same time. But I get the feeling, you know, when early on, it was it's the theatre that draws many people. Is that, oh, that yeah. the same for yeah. you? That was... Oh, I love theatre, yeah. And I have to say, you know, when I got my place at drama school, my parents were thrilled to bits. And they were really supportive. Um, and my mum told me a story before she died, and, and it still kind of brings a lump to my throat that as the train pulled out of the station in Lime Street in Liverpool and I was on my way to drama school, she turned to my father and she said, Oh, Dad, I hope she doesn't grow away from us. And, you know, that wow. really touched me, and I never did. Because it, it took you away from home quite early on, didn't it? It, it took you... Well, I, I was just 20 when I went, yeah. And three years at drama school, and then I went into rep, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been so, uh, got talk, so fortunate. We have been fortunate, but you, you, you also make the roles yourself. We talk about, you know, but Abigail's party, people are still talking about it. What was that like to do? Would you think... The, the, I often ask, is, is somebody, you know, the iconic sort of films, the iconic theatre... Uh, is there a moment where you where you're doing this and go, this is different to the norm. This is this is different to the normal stuff that we're doing. This is going to be. This has got legs. This has got longevity. This is. Is it? it there must yeah, be that well, moment when you're doing it. Is there that kind of stuff or or not? Well, sometimes, yeah. I mean, with Abigail's party, uh, again, I was, I was given the opportunity to invent this character, then to improvise, and we developed this play. Yeah. Over eight weeks. And it was tough, but, but, God, it was fun to do. And, of course, improvising has always been... I'm, I'm happiest... Going back to well, what we are talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And going back from when I was a kid. And, and so... Um, and, and also, one of my favourites is Nuts in May. I don't know if you've ever seen that one. It was a, a while ago. It was right. 1976. But, I, was, but it, I, was, I was four then. You sorry. were four. You were a little <laughs> baby boy. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but I love that, cos, that, again, that was improvising and we were down in Dorset and I was playing the guitar and, you know, my, my four chords that I knew, and making up songs and uh, painting and... I, I didn't know. We just had the best time. But they get the so. feeling, having spoke to you and... and uh, spoke many times before, you, you, you still love the business as much as you always have done. You know, because a lot of people oh, yeah. look at it, and particularly music, they get frustrated and that kind of stuff. Whereas still you, you still love it as much as you always well, have done. I've been incredibly lucky, because you do need luck. Yeah, you've got to be able to do it. Yeah. But you still need luck, because a lot of actors are talented, are clever. The opportunities don't come along, you know. And there are so many courses now, so many thousands coming out of drama schools. And is there enough work for them all? I don't know. You know, it's it's very hard. But um, but I s still got offered work. So <laughs> <laughs> you're doing not not too bad, are you? Really? No, <laughs> we're talking about support. We talked about your mum. If you don't mind me asking, you sadly lost your mum recently. Uh, no, it wasn't recently. But a few. It, it, it was quite a few years ago. A few now, years ago. Yeah. But but tell tell us about the organisation that we were with because you've raised an awful lot of money over the recent years. Well, yeah, um, Marie Curie. They. They actually run nine hospices throughout the UK. See, I didn't realise it was as many as this hospice. Yeah. yeah. I went to the hospice in Liverpool um, about a year ago, and, you know, they've got art groups and they've got people doing all sorts of things. That... That's why I went. I went on a cooking group the last yeah, time I was there yeah, as well. Because, yeah, because when you get ill, you're not going to die the next day, you know. So very often you've got quite a, a long time and you want to do things and you want to live. You know, and they help people to live through through an illness. So that that's so important to me, so important. I mean, it, and it's so scary when you're given a diagnosis. And so, I mean, I remember what happened with my mom. She she went to the Marie Curie on her first visit, 
and she came back and I expected her to be in tears. It's going to be the same as, as a friend of mine said exactly the same thing, yeah. wants to go back again. Yeah, and she said to me, oh, she said, oh, the doctor was lovely. Do you know, she said <laughs> she really loved my dress and my jacket. Yeah. And she said, oh, where did you get that dress and jacket? It's so nice. <laughs> But I never expected her to come home talking like that, yeah. you know. Obviously, she did the professional thing and she talked about, you know, treatments and... and but, but they were incredibly kind. So, we've got in here, we've got our cream spinach, we've got a little bit of uh, nutmeg in there I'm going to put in. Uh, just to, I'm nutmeg. concentrating on this, because this is... I really wanted to go to town on this one for you, but we've got a beautiful piece of fish. Yeah. It's over here. A little bit of nutmeg in here. And the mm -hmm. key to this is don't overcook the spinach. A little bit of butter. Because it cooks really quickly, doesn't it? Very, very, very quickly. And yeah. all that spinach that I had in that bowl has just gone into that amount. Brilliant. So there's there's not a lot, really, what you get out of a whole bag of spinach. But, you know, you eat the whole lot of this. It's unbelievable. And you're going to whiz it. Whiz and you it. just blend it, yeah. Stick blend a, it. Stick that on. And blend it up, and it'll grow this... The, the idea is you can blend it up as much as you want, but that's the idea. Just blend it up, you get this amazing sort of cream spinach. That when it, it tastes absolutely delicious. And have you got capers there? Are they capers? And then the capers are going to go in the little. Look at oh, this. Oh wow! So that's your nice little bit. You're making me want to cook again. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the whole idea of coming on a cooking show. <laughs> coming here, isn't it? Really? I hope so. That's that's the idea. Now the sauce. Yeah. Is the key to all this. You, you can do this sort of recipe with, with different types of fish. You can do it with salmon, but the key to this is the actual sauce itself. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of shallot, because you said you want to start cooking again. <laughs> this, is, this is how to create this wonderful little sauce. And you see how very, very quickly it is. Yeah. So what you have to do is get everything ready. So we've got a little bit of shallot. you then got your capers. We've then got our lemon, like that. So it's shallot, capers, butter, parsley. And all the while, you can see this pan getting really nice and hot. Now, what, mm. it, what is... It Bernoisette is not brown butter. It's not burnt butter, it's brown butter. And what you want to do is add enough butter to create a sauce, but to make it go not brown. But you need to make sure you've got everything ready. So in we go now, with Because the, the butter goes in, goes not brown, add the shallots, we've added everything very quickly and it's done. So in we go with this. Things are starting to happen now. At this moment in time, we add the shallot. Yeah. And you can see this is starting to go this nut brown colour. Keep the pan on the heat. Keep rolling it around like that. So it's nice and hot. As it starts to go this nut brown colour, we can then concentrate on the flavour now. We can add our little bit of capers. Have you, you just... done this before? I've done it a few times before, <laughs> yeah. Now, at this moment in time, you take it, lemon, squeeze the lemon, parsley, straight in. And then you act like a chef, loads of mess everywhere. Take the butter over the top. Ooh. You make it look so easy. Yeah, well, it's... you make your job look easy. You've been doing it a bit longer than I have, but look. <laughs> but we just take a little bit of that. Wow. And that is Dover sole with Bernoisette. And then what also we've got is you've got a little bit of spinach. That then sits in a little bowl. Your lovely cream spinach. Look at that. Not, you've done it so quickly as well. Well, I do try, you see. <laughs> and then you've got your nice little bit... Oh, potatoes. ..of potatoes. But you want potatoes, rather than just serve them as they are, you, of course, have to take some butter. There's a lot of butter in this. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> we warm that through. What have you put in there? Parsley. Parsley, okay. little bit of Taste. little bit of butter, right. okay. and you've got your nice cream spinach, your lovely Dover sauvignon, and that's that nut brown butter. You can see you get that oh, mm. amazing flavour. And then you've got your buttered potatoes, which you can then just take these and pop them with it. That, mm. to be honest, Alison, is one of my favourite dishes that I ever cooked, and I wanted to cook it for you. Dover salmon, yeah, cream spinach, butter new potatoes. Done. <laughs> now I'm going to put you a little bit of cream spinach with it as well. Yeah. On the side. 
Bon appétit. Thank you. Diving. Thank you very much. You've got your little new potatoes there. <laughs> it's like your own little restaurant here, isn't it, really? <laughs> <laughs> In fact, maybe I could do that when I retire. Just put a group of seats out here, and there we go. I could just be doing That's that. That's it. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well. Tell me what you think. You like your capers and everything, but... I love capers. Nut yeah. brown butter. That's my favourite, favourite dish. Mmm. Oh, nice. It is nice. It's a di Very nice. Yeah. First dish done. There we go, right? I'll be making a, a delicious almond tart for our listener at the end of the show. I'm heading off to the home of Gavin and Stacey on a food adventure to Barry Island. Um, that's where I'm going on a food adventure. <laughs> uh, but join me after the break. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. But uh, after the break, the very talented Romy Gill will be firing up these very stoves. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. Now, I've got some cracking recipes for sardines coming up in this week's Little Masterclass. And there's an almond and cherry tart on the menu for my guest, Alison Stedman, a little bit later. But first, I'm here in the kitchen uh, with a chef whose food and her per personality puts a smile on your face whenever she comes into the room. It's the brilliant Romy Gill! <laughs> Paul's man in the stove over there as well. So what are you, you, you going to be doing me. then, Romy? So, I'm so glad I have two men helping me. I know, you've got both of us I'm now. I'm so, so excited <laughs> for Paul to taste my food. You've tasted it before. Yeah, I so can't wait for Paul to taste and help me cooking. For Paul. Pleasure. So, Pleasure. first of all, um, James, I need a little help making... if you could make some paste for me. This is a really simple, easy dish. OK, you're going to um, run through the ingredients, so go through this and I'll, and I'll make it for you. So, these are chicken thighs. I think thighs, we've taken... the skin is removed, there's no bones in it as well. People who doesn't like the bones, have so taken the bone out. So it's skinless, boneless chicken thighs. Mm -hmm. um, it's got coriander, fresh coriander, a lot of it. Um, some salt, ground coriander and turmeric, green chilies, depending how much heat you would like. And you know I like a little bit of heat. Yeah, um, some coconut milk here. If people don't like the taste of coconut milk, they can add cream to it as okay. well, you know? And also wild garlic. Now we have a season of wild garlic. You can add the wild garlic to it. I'll yeah. chop this for you so you can, like, roughly, okay. and then you can... Add that. So this is the paste for the chicken. And this goes in there as well, James. Okay. Everything, all the Stick it in. spices. I'll, I'll do that for you. Spices, chilies. I'm going to give that to you. I'll you do, do that, that for you. Not yes. a problem. Right. Thank you. And Paul, I'm just going to quickly sieve this for you. I think it's really important to sieve your um, gram flowers, yeah. and you know, you can use. One part of the India I, I recently went was they use a lot of rice flour there as well. Yeah. So rice flour is actually quite makes the bakora really crunchy. If you sieve any kind of flour, if you're baking as well, it's so important, I think, so. You know, it's really yeah. gives you that air in there. So I'm going to give that to you. That yeah. water goes in there. This onions goes in there as well. And this is... Have you tasted the dried pomegranate seeds called anardana? No. Um, James, uh, James has before. I've tasted these. these are so better. these are done by me. You need to taste those. And these go in there as well. That's cumin, green chilies, and some salt. <laughs> amazing. They are amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Like, so where that, do people get those from? They can buy online on any Asian shops. Now, they, some of the supermarkets do it as well. Okay. And they're just, dry, they're just called dry pomegranates. They're, so, they are called anardana. Ana, but, anardana. Yes. Okay. And you can make that in your, at your home as well, in the oven. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can make it in the oven. Very on a very all in. low heat. All in? Half, I Half, think. Half, so. yeah. And Very good at delegating, I have to say, already. You know, we've got both of us are moving and we're all working already, aren't we, really? <laughs> <laughs> I think that that I, I I think with food it's it's connecting. Or if all of us do it together, it's all about So those are just gonna give you when they fry like nice little pockets of acidity. Absolutely, yeah. and sweetness. That all goes in there. And I've got a little bit more red chilies. These are Kashmiri yeah. chilies. This gives you a little bit of warmth to chilies. Yeah. yeah, lovely. Um and there's some water. Just add a little bit. Bit by bit. Yes. Yeah. And take a little bit of this, this much, you know? Yeah. Otherwise, people make it like big bowls and they're so doughy and not nice and they're not cooked properly. Can I ask? Yes. What, what's, the, what's the kind of, like, the real fundamental differences then between, like, that pakora and, say, like, onion bhaji? Nothing different. It's just that it's full of uh, dough yeah. and this has got lovely flavours and lovely things in it. And we call it pakora. We don't call it onion bhaji. OK, so, yeah. just, so really nothing yeah. other than this yeah. is You can have proper. vegetables here. <laughs> this saying. is proper. <laughs> 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 what you're saying is you've been doing it wrong forever. 
<laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> a polite way of putting it. Would yeah. you add some oil on the top? You can yeah. add ghee if you like ghee. I, but put, ghee, I put ghee in the bottom yeah, of it. Yeah, a little bit oil as well. That so, means... so this is all the, the dressing that we blended up. Now, do you have to marinate this or do you have to leave you, it? Or? Yeah, I think so for some time. And then you can cook in the oven for uh, 45 minutes or depending on how big your thighs are or smaller, and depending on that, hour to half an hour to 45 okay. minutes. Yeah. So what's, you want Paul to sort of deep fry these make, at the same time? I'm going to take this. I'm going to show you. You're not going to make a bowl. Yeah. You just do it like that. Yeah. So yeah? Small, smaller than yes, that. Yes, please. Yeah. You want and then to just drop them in. Drop them in, yes, please. Yeah, stop stop getting this Michelin star head on it. Just go back to just oh, go back to basics. Yeah. Here we go. Just a little dollop. <laughs> I'm, 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 it's, I'm learning. Always learning. <laughs> what are you do? What are you making now? Then? I am uh, apart from giving orders, Sorry. I thought I'd make something as well. So I'll make some flatbread, simple flatbread. Yeah. Self-raising flour. Yeah. Some yogurt, Greek yogurt. Yeah. Milk. Salt, nigella seeds, which people call onion seeds as well. Yeah. And some baking powder and a little bit of sugar. You bind that together, not water. I just find this is the dough that was made earlier. So I'm just the going to... The key to flatbread is to make it not too dry, isn't it? That, that's the yes, key. it's not too dry and leave it to rest. Very important, leaving it to rest on a room temperature. I find that it's really, really important. Yeah. So I'm just going to make it like a pita, you know? And nigella Rome, seeds. Happy? Very happy, yes. You're yeah. doing a great job. Nice. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Back to basics, like... Keep going. Like, yes. There's still time to mess it up yet. you still got half the mix. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we are rocking here. We are on it, yeah. So, I'm... So, this, you, this you're going to cook on a griddle, these? Yes, you can do any. Okay. Griddle, barbecue, oven, grill, anywhere. But I just think that um, the, uh, the naan from the tandoor is so delicious. OK. But this is quite easy, and if you taste this... Now, all so... these ideas are in the book, so t tell us about the new book, because you've got a new book coming out. I have. Tell us about the new book. Um, it's called The Himalayan Trail. Yeah. Um, it's from nice the parts... Name. Part, thank you, Paul. It's parts from Kashmir and Ladakh, which is up north. Yeah. And it's all the recipes and stories from that part of the world, which I went at the time of COVID. Um, yeah. When the Delta virus was really high, uh, we did that, which was amazing to meet these people and tell their stories. I, see, Indian cooking fascinates me because it's not only just the history, but the, the variety of food that you do all across the country, from north, south, east, west, central. There, there's so many different regions, so many different types of food, so many different styles of food. So, so many different... You know, from, from, from different nationalities and, and different blends of nationalities, it's just... A, it's a unique melting pot, I think, in terms of food. Absolutely. And, and then going to the dark, which was wonderful, because I, I didn't even know... I come from India. I didn't know they make their own pasta. They make their own dumplings, you know, and they make their own noodles. Yeah. So I learned all that from the, these people and, and the best, best apricot um, in, in that part of the region. So it's it interesting, was... we had Cyrus on the show who cooked Chinese Indian food as yes, well. Yes, we do. Big which Chinese want... community there. Which, you don't... which is called the Hakka community, where I'm born and brought up in West Bengal, so it's from there. Um, but you won't find that food in China, you get in India. So Indo-Chinese food is very spicy, but it's so delicious. So what are you brushing it with now? What, what have you got I, on there? I like ghee. I think ghee gives you such a good texture. If you don't eat ghee, if you're vegan, then you can have coconut milk instead, or almond milk, or soya milk. So you can, okay. uh, you can change to according to your texture taste as well okay. and then you can add oil on the top right okay so yeah that's it i um shall i make another one if you're hungry yeah go on it, it, i think you know it's not my i don't eat much but the fellow at the end eats quite a bit yeah, yeah. go on uh, go on you get another three or four on <laughs> I've, 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 I've taken... it's a long trip back to cornwall <laughs> Exactly. I've so I've taken the chicken out. You don't. You just put it in the oven as is, exactly like that. Yes, it is. It's so good. I think the reason I came up with this recipe was because my daughter, as I spoke to you last time as well, was going to university. She, she's now in Sheffield University, and I taught her all these things because I think otherwise they end up eating so much junk. But actually, she's a really good cook, and she does cook. Right. And some of the basics, some of the students don't even know how to cook. She'll cook lovely dishes, and your favourite <coughs> butter chicken. She makes that. I with. love that one. Yes. Yeah. So do you want me to plate this one up on? A platter or something? Yes, that... please. So if thank I take you. the platter, there you go. And I'll give you some bread. So can... There you go. Oh, thank you, Paul. Look at this. Please, big hand for Paul. Yay. Thank you. 
Again. Absolutely <laughs> hates it. He wanted me to go down. He, do you know what? He wanted me to completely mess, mess it up. It up yes. <laughs> We're from the southwest. How can we mess it up? We have to gam up together, Just right? We have to be together. You, he wanted Stick you around to an hour and a half. Yeah. You're about to find out. Yeah. We have to be together. We can't. <laughs> we have to support each other. Yeah. It's fine. There we go. Right. So that looks amazing. Can sprinkle oh some my of goodness. the cumin seeds on the top as well, please? It looks incredible. So what have you got on it? You've just got... What are, what are these over here? You've just got... Just roasted cumin seeds. Right. That's it. That's fun. And that's over the top. Wow. How good do they look? So give us the name of the book, then. It's called On the Himalayan Trail. Recipes and food stories from Kashmir I'm to Ladakh. I'm sure it'll be a huge success as well. And I lo just look at those, so simple to make. Just, and like you say, you don't have to have a griddle, you can just use a pan, dry pan, something yes. like that, nice and easy. And do that when I'm doing with the fingers, it just gives you that, it's cooked properly then. It it's give, gives you a nice it's crunchy taste. It's all cooked properly. Yeah. Well, Miguel, everybody. Thank you. Right, I'm going to have a little taste of these. Can I take a couple of these mm -hmm. before I pass it on to Mr Ainsworth over there? Okay, and then I've got corn. a taste of these. So it's interesting when you said about these... Nine of fun pork. Oh, there you are. It's interesting. Pork, when you say about these, you can serve them with anything. Yes. These. Yes. And, and the, the me you can make them with anything. You can make with anything. You can have leftover, like broccoli, cauliflower, potatoes, anything like that. Carrots. Paul, these are made by Paul earlier. You've done a good job. That chicken's beautiful. That's nice, isn't it, that? So tell me about these pakoras, then. What do you reckon? I'm going to have a taste, and I'm going to say how the pakoras are made, yeah. I think you're supposed to cut them in half before you stuff them in your mouth, eh? <laughs> 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 you right there? Yeah. Cut them in half or inhale them. <laughs> <laughs> but the pomegranate That is beautiful. It's over, isn't it? Yeah. I think also not that, but slicing the um, onions really thin, that makes such a huge difference. And then... But it's oh. the texture of the pomegranate, that bite yeah. that you were getting there yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. That so makes good. it... You know, if you, didn't, if you didn't have that, it's just not the same, is it? The textures that are in there, the flavour's amazing. It's, uh, what I've learned, like you say, is just kind of binding those onions really lightly with that flour. <clears throat> That's amazing. Yeah. Well, there you go. Let me get everybody. Amazing. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, now, join us after the break when I'm going to be visiting Wales, and particularly Barry Island. You don't want to miss that one. I'll see you in a bit. Go over with this. Welcome back. Now, I'll be teaching you how to cook sardines with confidence in this week's Little Masterclass. And I'll be preparing an amazing almond tart very shortly. OK, it's time to take a look back at some of my favourite food adventures. This week, in honour of my guest, Alison Stedman, my food adventures are taking me to the home of Gavin and Stacey as Stephen Terry and I visit Barry Island Fairground. Enjoy this one. The fairground has been a key part of Barry Island's appeal since the very beginning. It puts a smile on your face, though, doesn't it? Brings out memories. It's Go straight. Log flute, it's got to be Dodgems, hasn't it? Dodgems. It's got to be Let's Dodgems. Let's go, Dodgems. <laughs> this is almost as much fun as driving the Mini. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lunatic. Even scarier than Stephen's driving, the ghost train. <laughs> Actually, we might be a little bit big for this one. <laughs> well, it is I think it's stuck. <laughs> I didn't get me, it got you, look. I have not wet myself. Well, not yet anyway, but the log flume will no doubt take care of that. Meanwhile, Stephen has opted for the Welsh Dragon Ride. <laughs> <laughs> Never too old! Especially if you're a big kid like Stephen Terry. What 
Well, that was a lot of fun. Stephen enjoyed it so much, he stayed there going round and round. But I've worked up an appetite, and I'm going to cook my next dish right here on Barry Beach. Now, there are many classic dishes that I could do in a seaside location like this. Fish and chips been the obvious one, a little bit of sponge sugar, but I've done enough of that on TV. I thought I'd do churros, which is like a type of donut. So the churros is, is based on a shoe pastry. It's a little bit of water, flour, a little bit of baking powder, some butter, some eggs, and a touch of salt. And the first thing you do is you warm up the water with a pinch of salt and a little bit of sugar. In we go with the Welsh butter, about 75 grams, roughly, kind of. Maybe 85 grams. That's going to go in there. And we heat this up. Now, when your butter has melted a little bit, this is where we can add our flour. Now, there's quite a lot of flour in a churros, and this is why it's much easier to make than a donut. The donut is made as an enriched yeast dough that you've got to leave to prove and then deep fry it. It's actually quite tricky. This one is much more simple. So you combine all the ingredients together now, and it thickens up into this paste, like that. So you've got this dough, and then we add the egg. So now as the mixture cools down, we can add a little bit of our baking powder, just a touch. That goes in there and mix this all in. The good thing about this is you can leave it to rest now and just let it sit there and cook them as and when you want to. So I'm just going to leave that to one side. Meanwhile, we can turn our attention to our sauces. I'm just going to do two nice, simple ones, really. First one is a dolce sauce, which is condensed milk that's been cooked in a can and some Welsh cream liqueur. and then just heat it up. And that's the source of that one done. So while that one warms through, the other one is a simple chocolate and orange sauce. Chocolate. Bit of orange. Now, there's several ways you make an, a chocolate sauce, really, one of which you can start off with a bit of stock syrup, add the chocolate, and that's where you'll get a rich, shiny sauce. The other one is use a touch of orange and double cream. See that? That's my career going. About 150 mils of double cream. Next, turn our attention back to our sauce over here. Once you've got our sauce done like that, we can then put our chocolate one on. We'll pop this in a bowl. Save a little bit left. It is good, is that? And do the same. Apologies for the music, but I wonder if Stephen's won me any toys yet. That is a good grab. So your chocolate sauce is now done. We can take a little pot of that as well. Pour that in. That is going to taste ace. And then we'll bring our nice hot oil and get it even hotter. But what we do need is the help of one of these. Take your piping bag with a star-shaped nozzle, pop it into your bucket, and pour your mixture in. Don't see him doing this in Spain, do you? So, once you're ready, and when the oil's nice and hot, and that's the key to it, this is about 180, 190 degrees, something like that, hold your piping bag, and hold it carefully, and you need a pair of scissors to hand, because when this starts to drip through, the only way to cut it is to cut it with a pair of scissors at the same time. Good luck doing this at home. with the scissors. So these want to fry for about three or four minutes. 
Meanwhile, we can get the rest of our stuff ready. Bit of cocoa powder in our sieve. Sure us already. Sprinkle them with a bit of sugar. Nice bit of sugar. Pop these on here. More sugar. Cocoa powder. And then it's not quite finished yet. We've got this wonderful lady called Sam Head. She works on the show. And her job is to make food look pretty. So she said, I've got you a few of these to put on. Chocolate sheep. Sean Hill, if you're watching this, I do apologise. In fact, I don't, because I went out and bought this. And this. Barry Island. So there you have it, my Barry Island churros. Yeah, a bit kitsch, but the music's still playing, remember? Worse than seagulls, this lot. I remember that day well and the ghost trade. Right, still to come, we've got a recipe for monkfish from Chef Paul Ainsworth, and I'll be dishing up a delicious dessert for Alison Stedman at the end of the show. But after the break, we've got a masterclass in sardines. I promise, you don't want to miss this one. Welcome back. Now I'll be making an almond tart for my guest, Alison Stedman, and Chef Paul Ainsworth will be working his Michelin-starred magic on a dish of monkfish very shortly. But first, it's time for this week's Little Masterclass. And this week's Masterclass is all about one of my favourite fish out there in the sea, and it's sardines. Now, sardines have been rebranded since about the 1990s. They used to be called pilchards. Uh, pilchards tend to be slightly larger. They are the same family, they are the same fish. Uh, it's just that thought people would sell them and they'd sell more if they were called sardines. The sad fact is that 90% of the sardines that we catch in this country are caught off the south coast of Cornwall, which is fine, uh, but the predominantly of those are sent abroad uh, to France, to Spain, to Italy and that kind of stuff. So when you're sat there uh, in your sandals uh, with your red-coloured glow and you're eating sardines, predominantly these will come from this country as well, which is so sad when you think they're an amazing flavour, really, and you can do so many things with them. I'm going to do two dishes from it with these, really. We talked about France. I'm going to do one dish from France and one dish from uh, Spain for this one, because I'm going to do a classic romesco sauce, and I'm going to do a simple little Vier sauce. But I think predominantly the reason people don't like sardines that much is the bones. So what you can do... If you're fortunate enough to get a fishmonger near you, or you can get these online as well nowadays, uh, they can butterfly it. And they're far better at doing this than what I am, but they have a way of removing the bones out like that, very simply with a knife. However, you can simply do this prior to cooking them. And the best way to do these, I'm going to grill some whole, and I'm going to basically butterfly them and then grill some under the grill. You take a sardine like that, and they've got to be really, really fresh. That's the key to this one. And they are fresh, because these things, they used to be only available for sort of nine months of the year, and it's actually this time of the year they wouldn't necessarily be in season. But these are Cornish sardines, which tells you a lot about what's happening really in the sea as it's warming all up. We're getting fish sustainable all the way around and all over the UK, or all times of the year, particularly the sardines that we've got on here. So what we want to do with these, to remove the bones, you can see the bones inside there, what you do is you take the fish and press it along the backbone. Now you want to press it so it's nice and flat like that, but you keep pressing it, pressing it, pressing it. Now if you didn't want that little bit, to make it TV friendly, it's utter crazy, but, but you just press that along there. Now what you end up with, is the bones that we have in here, like that. So you can take your finger underneath and gradually they'll lift up, like this. Now, if you take your finger underneath, you can see what I'm doing here is I'm prising the bones from underneath, behind, there you go, and they just pull this out, like that. See that? And you're just pulling it all like that. You're pulling out this whole chunk. Whether you use a pair of scissors 
and then they snip off like that. And you can turn that over. That now, if you trim it up, has got no bones in it. So, but to be honest with you, I think part of the enjoyment of eating these things is eating them whole on the griddle. Now, they can either be on the, on the barbecue or I've got a hot griddle over here. So what I'm going to do with these, really, is quite simply cook them, as I would do if you're abroad, which, is like I'm saying, is crazy, but salt over the top, some black pepper, like that, and very little else, really. You don't need much. Now, I, I cook them with a little bit of vegetable oil. You can use some olive oil for this, which I'm going to use to grill them uh, under the grill, and particularly for our sauce, but just a little bit of oil on there. And then what we can do is just, if, if you don't like it, that, I just don't understand why people do this, but I know just people are going to be writing in. So we'll lose that out to one side. There you go. And then we can just put our fish straight on our griddle like that. It's, it's, I always think when you're cooking sardines and fish like this, be it mackerel and sardines, the enjoyment you get by just looking at the food cooking like this, the simplicity of how it's cooked is, is one of the enjoyments of it, really. And you just leave those just to griddle nicely. Now, at the same time, now, we can take our other ones. These are going to take no more than about 30 seconds to cook under a hot grill. But we take some olive oil. And what I do with this is, because these are classed as an oily fish anyway, I actually season the tray. So black pepper and salt, because these are going to generally be cooked under a hot grill. And you want a really hot grill so they colour nicely. Uh, but you can see they're so, so thin. And if you do that and put black pepper on it, over the top, it's just going to burn the pepper. So what I do is actually, it's just a little trick that I learned by a Spanish cook, is you just oil the tray like that, and that way you don't burn the black pepper and stuff underneath. So we've got our sardines cooking away. These are going to take seconds to cook, so I'm not going to put those under the grill yet. I'll just move those to one side. I'll wash my hands, and then you can see over here what's happening with our fish. Now, we just want to be just, just nice and careful. They don't take very long to cook these, so just cook on one side, but you want that to char nicely. As, now, as well as that, we're going to take our little bit of bread and we want some nice bits of bread. And we need the bread for two things. The bread's going to be served with it, but also going to be put into the Romesco-style so sauce. So a little bit of uh, extra virgin olive oil, like that. And I'm going to pop the bread on here we're going to use that as well to make our little romesco sauce. So we'll just flick over our sardines. You can see they don't take very long to cook at all, so once they're over like that, look at these lines, look at that. It's the simplicity, like I was saying, the way you cook this. That's what I love about it. I was actually over in the Canary Islands a few weeks ago. And this is not a group on town, by the way. This is where it comes from. But I was over there, and one of the delights I had was sardines and, and particularly prawns cooked like this, whatever prawns I think they were called. They were just simply, simply cooked over coals. You just had that, no lemon, it was the confidence of cooking, but also the confidence of the ingredients, which I loved more than anything. So we just got a nice little bit of bread over here, like that. And like I said, we're going to serve it with this bread, but also I'm going to use this bread to make a classic romesco sauce. Now, the romesco sauce comes from Spain, so this is the Spanish side of it, which we're going to serve with this. So I'll take the bread off. There we go. Like that. And we can take our bread and then probably put that one in. Why not? Chop it up into pieces. Now, you don't have to toast this if you don't want. <coughs> I think it's really good toasted. In this blender goes everything, really. What we're going to do is take a little bit of garlic. I've got some red peppers. I've got some almonds, hazelnuts, oregano, <coughs> a little bit of lemon, some olive oil, obviously Spanish olive oil, uh, got some sherry vinegar and some smoked paprika. Now, you can put things like olives in it if you wanted to. What you want to do, first of all, is blend the bread in here and then start adding the things like your almonds and everything else. So they go in. So think of it like a red pesto with almonds and hazelnuts. You don't have to use hazelnuts. You could just use the almonds, but it's the almonds and the peppers are the key to this but particularly the wood-roasted peppers. So once you get to that stage, we've got these wood-roasted peppers that you can buy nowadays, which are amazing. These are delicious. They're going to go in there as well. A little bit of smoked paprika. Now, you get two different types of smoked paprika. You get sweet and hot. So you want to be quite 
generous with this as well. It's really nice, really nice flavour with this. I'll just check the old sardines over here, which are looking pretty good. We can lift these off, look. And they're cooked, look at that. That's just, they just look amazing, look. Just as they are. They look beautiful like that. There we go. And then you can, in the blender now, so we've got, this is the liquid side of it, so we've got the peppers and everything else, the garlic, olive oil, really good quality olive oil. In we go with a bit of, this is a key really, it's the red wine vinegar or sherry vinegar. Sherry vinegar is what you want for this one. And then oregano. Don't use the dried stuff, use the fresh stuff. Well, if possible, use the, use the fresh stuff, but oregano is what you want. That can go in there. You can put things like olives in here if you want, but give it a good blitz. This is where you end up with sort of like the Spanish version of a Italian pesto, I suppose. But we blend this all up. Try not to make it dry. If it starts to get dry, add a little bit more oil. Looking good there. Now, season it up. Some salt. Good amount of salt. Some black pepper. Give it a blitz again. At this moment of time, we can pop these in the oven for our little vierge. So that's it, it's a simple little romesco style sauce, really, really simple. You can then take your nice little bit of sauce, pop that on here, spread that all out. Now you can have it chunky, you can have it smooth, it's entirely up to you, but you put that on. But the thing about this is you can put your sardines Straight on it on here. Like that. And then don't be frightened with the oil, particularly olive oil. Get the olive oil on it over the top. Like that, because the idea is with this, is you eat it with the olive oil, with the sardines, but also with the chagro bread that comes with it, which you can just put this on the side then you can have this amazing, simple little dish. I think this tastes amazing. It looks spectacular, one that's so, so simple. Just the great quality of ingredients. Remember, these are on our doorstep as well, before we ship them abroad. While these are under the grill, and they only take seconds, this, this sauce takes really seconds as well. This class is a vierge. A vierge is sort of a warm dressing. Lemon in its heart, olive oil of its heart. Uh, we use garlic for this. Again, very similar sort of the, to the, the, the sort of a Spanish style, but this is French. We take some a good amount of olive oil. The base of this sauce is olive oil. We take some lemon. Now, what we don't want to be doing with this, so think of it like a warm dressing. What we mustn't do with this is, when we got the tomatoes in it, is start to overcook this. So you just want to warm this up now with things like this. This is a little bit of coriander seed. And it's the coriander seed and garlic that uses a base. You can just use that as it is, but with the addition of tomatoes and herbs, things like tarragon and a little bit of chives is all you need. So you can take your tarragon and chives, chop it up. This is where you can put any herb you want in, even just parsley. You don't have to put herbs in this as well. It can be just the basis of this, but you warm it up. And then the tomatoes, I've taken these and we've just concast them, which is de-seeded and skinned them. And we can chop these up like that. They're ready, look. So, so fast. Look at that, done. Really, really quick under a hot grill. And you want that skin sort of charred as well, which is where you get this amazing sort of flavor from it. So we've just got the tomatoes here, just roughly chopped, like that. And the reason why I'm de-seeding uh, them, really, is that I don't want the tomatoes to bleed into the sauce, really. I want to stay that lovely, ye nice yellow colour. So when we warm this through, that's all it takes. You're going to take a pinch of salt, a little bit of black pepper, and the acidity, because you've got this oily fish, the acidity that you've got with the vinegar in here, but also what you've got with the lemon in here, works so well together with this. And you just bring this together. 
It's wonderful. Well, look at the colour of this. Now, this is amazing with another fish as well, which is caught in, in uh, well, Cornwall as well, red mullet, which is also delicious, but goes well with salmon, this as well. If you can't get all the sardines, it's just, it's delicious with many, many different types of, particularly oily fish as well, it's delicious with. But we're going to take our sardines and you just pop these on the plate. I and mean, we serve these in the restaurant just on toast with a little bit of chutney. I just think it's just one of the delights, really, of these amazing types of fish we have in this country that we don't really take for granted until we go abroad and eat them and enjoy them over there. And you don't realise, predominantly, they're from our doorstep over here. Easy as that. Done. Now, if there's anything you'd like to learn about in a little mask us, then do get in touch. We'll see if we can help out right here on the show. Time now for a quick break. Join me again in a couple of minutes where Mr Paul Ainsworth will be turning his hand behind the stove. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. Now, I'll be cooking lunch for Alison Stedman very shortly. But first, I'm here with a chef who cut his teeth working with the likes of Gordon Ramsay, Guy Rhodes and Marcus Warren before starting up a new chapter of his life due to tax purposes down in Cornwall. It's the brilliant Paul Ainsworth! Yeah, <laughs> love you, love you, love you, pal. And, of course, Alicia's here as well. <laughs> Alicia's here as well. So what are we cooking, my friend? What are we doing? We're going to do a beautiful whole roast monkfish. Yeah. With this amazing array of vegetables here. Wonderful. So spring, we've got asparagus, peas, morels, beautiful radishes. Yeah. And, yeah, and we're going to use that lovely piece of ham next to you. So, so, you, so you brought the kitchen sink piece. with him, honey, really, Hi. today. Hi. Amazing. Right. So, so what are we so, going to do with the monkfish, then? What we're going to do is, this is a real family dish. Middle of the table, everyone can get stuck in, and we're going to carve it. Basically, it's a bit like, like a leg of lamb. Okay. So we're just going to, to keep, so it cooks nice and even. I'm just going to take these fillets off here at the back. So we'll keep those. Yeah. Use those for goujons. Use those in the pub. Yeah. Congratulations, absolutely. by the way. Pub's been voted, what, top ten? Best pubs in Britain, gastro pubs in Britain? Yeah. Yeah, that was in, not in January. Not bad, in, is it, really? Not bad, up, is in, it? up in Manchester, so yeah. that was amazing for the team. And, you know, like, Joe's the head chef there, Craig, the sous chef, they've been there since day one. Yeah. It was a special so this, moment. The, so you've got your, your main base is around the pad store bit. Yeah. And then over the water, you've got the... the, 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 the in the rock bit, uh, you've got the mariners. Absolutely. As well. Yeah. And what's this thing about you, you're doing... You're, you're venturing out this summer and you're going to be doing sort of a... What's this... This clubbing beach is supposed to be like Ibiza, but it's in Cornwall. <laughs> How is that going to work? It's a slight difference. There's a slight difference, mate, in there, really. I so, don't mean to be rude, but... Hey, mate, hang on, hang on, hang on. Before you... They'll be coming after you. Right, so, no, so what we're doing, we basically... Uh, last year, so we've got some amazing friends who we've met in Rock, who Rock Marine, so they have all yeah. the moorings for all of the, yeah. all of the red boats and everything, yeah. and they've got this amazing location there, Bitter Beach. Right. And it was like... What an amazing place. Like where Ibiza we could... Beach. Ex ex better than better. Ibiza. Better. Better. All right. Oh, listen, I lived in this Cornwall is... for 10 years. So I don't need to tell you, know, don't you? Yeah, it's fucking. You it. know. So basically, we're going to create like these amazing feasts, music, yeah. and just like they just become like 100 Can or so. Just get the yeah, yeah. Well, no, not really. <laughs> 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 honest answer is. We never ask you a question. You stop. Just keep going. Honest answer. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I, I feel like I have, to defend, going. I have to defend Cornwall. He likes, he likes to not Cornwall. I don't, <laughs> I've never not Cornwall. When you're driving and he's talking, he gets slower. I, I know he does. I've never not, I've never not Cornwall. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you do, don't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is true. Right. <sighs> Next. Stage one. Stage one. All right. I'm on now. stage two bit, am I? Now, I've minute. got some equal quantities of a mild curry seasoning, so basically like korma powder, yeah. mixed with equal quantities of salt, yeah. all right? So we're just going to season the monkfish all over with so that. The dog's come wandering in. He quite, quite fancies a bit of this, you And, see. like, the flavour, like, this mild curry seasoning with things like... Works well with scallops, monkfish is absolutely brilliant. And just have it in your have it in your cupboard. You know, you just mix the equal yeah. quantities of the curry powder and salt. Really, really nice. Now, I'm going to give you this now, James. I'm just going to drizzle it with a little bit of oil. Right. Not much, because we're going to put it straight onto the barbecue here. Nice. All right? So what I'm going to do... Just pass me the whole thing. And then I'm going to pass you the whole thing and just rub that in. So already you can see... I'll let you do that, because my fingers <laughs> have gone. Yeah. Already you can see we are in... Flavour Town. All right? Flavour Town? Oh. Yes. You oh, do come up go. with these sayings. <laughs> <laughs> just get on with it. Yeah. Oh. Right. 
Yeah. OK, next. Yeah. So we've got a lovely leg of ham there, and I just want you to give me some thin slices, cos monkfish, peas, yeah. the lettuce, the yeah. asparagus, it all works and marries really well together. Yeah. But when we finish with those hams, we don't get rid of those bones. We then have here a what we call a brodo. So it's basically a, a really, really enriched ham stock. OK? Now, it's interesting, see... before, before you start cooking and before you put in the rest of the ingredients, yeah. you've spotted something over there that's quite interesting, with, particularly with the morels. There's something quite fascinating with morels, isn't there? Well, I've just, I've just nabbed one out, actually. Yeah. Right, so when you do morel mushrooms, it doesn't matter whether the blonde or the black ones, they've got actually a high level of toxic, uh, toxicity in them and they've got a compound called hydrazine. Right. So hydra meaning water. But what it does is it acts as a nerve agent and in the worst cases, they can kill you. And now, the hydrazine... Worst cases. Are you listening? Are you listening? Just right. past that bit. Right. <laughs> so the worst case, it can kill you, and it has been known to, but nasty stomach ache, but also can actually act on your nervous system. So when they do that classic... Is this just, just morels, or...? It's just morels. Something particular with... Right. It's just... You know, it's like, you just got to imagine, every mushroom you come across is an individual chemical compound. Right. Don't just look at them because of flavour, just look at them for what they are. Right? So when you get that classic French cookery, and yeah. they do them in Madeira wine, because it's water-soluble, that will come out of the water and it will evaporate and it will make them safe. So if you're actually cooking with morels, and they're really common, and they're really common, don't underestimate them. These... Or burn yourself, either. I was fine until he turned it over. Look, it was per it's going perfectly well till he started butting in. Well, that'll get rid of it. Yeah, so that'll get rid of it, won't it? What do you have to do to the morels, then, to stop that? Liquid? Liquid. Okay. Always do them in, like, two or three minutes of liquid, enough to sort of, like, evaporate, get the heat through it. The, the compound will be soluble. It will come out through the evaporation of liquid, whether that's water, wine, what else. Not oil, not sautéing them. So that's what you need to do. I know, he's got, I know he's got some more liquid going in there now, have got you? more liquid going in there now, haven't you? Yeah, so we were going to sauté the morels. Yes. Yeah, but um, uh, but now we're going to put some liquid in. That's <laughs> right. Now, look, I mean, it's... Like, I've never... It never... doesn't that look amazing? The, yeah. the, the, it does I'm going to pop cracking. this in the, in the You didn't know that, did you? A lot, of chefs, not... a lot of chefs don't know that, because, because they're so used to working with morels, and more or less, you know, nine times out of ten, they're all right, there are instances... Where I have to say, I didn't know that. And it, no. Yeah, it's, no. it's, I mean, it's a fascinating subject. Like, everything you do, is, I mean, the talk about it is fascinating. But yeah. t talk about what we've got in here, then. What we've so, got in here. Before we put the morels in. Yeah, before we put the morels in. Yeah. So we started off, James, with some nice diced shallot. Yeah. Then we add two cloves of garlic, OK? And we've just started that off in a little bit of oil, OK? So now I'm putting in my morels. Mm -hmm. And also as well, we, this is a this is a really it's one of those dishes. It's got a lovely, nice seasoning to it. You've got the lovely saltiness from the ham. Mm. We've got our monkfish there. So good. Now I've just added in the morels and the white beans. All right. So they're next. I'm just going to each time a little pinch of salt. And now just move that around and just look at that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> This is your this is your fish, which I'll get an old giddy keeper over that. Aren't you? I'll leave out to rest. A leave that bit, to rest, thanks, James. Now I'm just having a little twist of white pepper. Oh, white. All right. Lettuce. Again, that's last because you want a little bit of texture in that. So we're going to put that lettuce in last. All right. And again, move it around. You've got all that lovely steam because these are great vegetables, and you just want to enjoy them as they should be, not overcooked. All right, but at the same time, I'm not into like al dente. You want it, you want it to have mm -hmm. a nice bit of texture, but also cooked. I'm just making sure you cook these mushrooms properly. Yeah, That's I what know. I'm doing. Yeah. I'm not yeah. saying no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, look, yeah. I'm, I'm looking for steam. Can you imagine? <laughs> but you've got it in air too yeah. much. I'm Paul, thinking, put Paul, it down, put it down. <laughs> Paul Ainsworth <laughs> <laughs> comes to James Martin's house yeah. <laughs> and wipes him out with a morel <laughs> mushroom. <laughs> That's my job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right now. Now, about this, so you leave, leave it, like you say, you leave this to rest. Leave this to rest. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this. It is. I mean, this. look at this one's cooking in the, in the oven over here. It's just... This is in the, in the, the wood-fired oven. But conventionally in the oven at, at home, how long for? 10 minutes, 12 minutes. And like I said, really, just... That's yeah, awesome. So yeah. once you sealed it off on the barbecue... Sealed it off. But the best way to tell, James, is just getting one of those, like, probes online. Yeah. You know, the, the digital ones. Yeah. Stick it into the nice thick part yeah. at the end. And once you're, once you're at that kind of 40, 45, you're there and let it rest. Yeah. 
I mean, like, just incredible. All right, Joan, can you just pass me the platter down, please, yeah. mate? There you go. Thank you. OK. Oh, there you go. And then we're just going to... Vegetables. I will do. While you're ready. your veg, I'll just... I'll brush that. Brush that into the, with the brown butter. So that on there like that. And now, like I said, like it's a piece of... Look at that. Oh, that's nice. It's not too shabby, is it? It's not too shabby, is it, really? Tell you what, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, just look. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the great thing about mugfish, you, you've got that one central bone throughout. You haven't yeah. got little piddly bones. No. You just got one really big piece in the middle. Meaty. There's no fiddly bones yeah. to pick out of. Now you've got all that lovely warmth, and then I'm just going to grab some of this ham. You've had a taste of this ham, haven't you, I've Alicia? I've had quite a lot. Three. Yeah. Quite a all lot. All right. And yeah, now, look, three. now we just put that... So you see the lovely warmth from the monkfish? Ah. you got the ham on top, so that's then... Melting so that's take that it, yeah, yeah, melting that melting that fat. And if you were serving it, so we put... Then you put that into the middle of the table. <laughs> so you can carve more. So we'll stick that there. All right. Oh, look at that. So that you would, you, take that I mean, you'd bit. literally serve that as a as an extra bit if somebody wanted yeah. it as well. Extra extra bit like that. Yeah. Oh. Then that goes down into the middle of the table. That looks amazing. Could, give and us the name of this dish then. Roasted monkfish, fricassee, spring vegetables, and a ham brodo. It's a long way to Cornwall to taste this. It's much better than coming to the house. But oh yeah. Paul Ainsworth, everybody. Great. See? Ladies first. Oh, in you go. You. In you go. It's an amazing dish, this. I mean, monkfish, when it's uh, served like that and cooked like that, like you see, because most people would overcook this because yeah. they wouldn't probe it. Yeah. It's 40, 45 degrees, yeah. no more. Yeah. And you take it out and leave it to rest is, is the best way. Just yeah. Cover it over with tinfoil if you need be, but. Yeah. Like cracking that. And the ham's so good. I mean, yeah. people often say with monkfish you can do with bacon, and, but with the ham it's really, really yeah. good. Because there's so much flavour in that. Um, thinly sliced and just let the warmth of the dish warm it through and yeah, it's mm, toaster. It's a classic. It's you know worthy of the trip from Donny. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Do sounds good to me. Brilliant. That right. Thanks, Paul Ains with everybody. <laughs> uh, that's nearly it for today's show. But we've still got time for one more final dish. I'll see you here after the break when I'll be making a delicious almond and cherry tart for Alison Stedman. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. Now, sadly, to the last part of the show, but I'm back in the kitchen with my fabulous guest, the one and only Alison Stedman. Yeah. What we're going to do is going to do an amazing little dessert for you. Uh, this is a wonderful little dessert. Think of it like a frangipan tartlet. So, frangipan, beautiful, light, taste of almonds. A lot of people put almond essence in it. I'll tell you the reason why you don't in a minute. It tastes horrible. Uh, and then we're going to make it a lovely little pastry, wafer, wafer thin, serve it with these amazing cherries. And they are unbelievable, these cherries. But first thing we do is start off with the frangipan first. So, the frangipan contains butter, sugar, eggs, and ground almonds, and no almond essence. The problem is that almond essence is a chemical and it makes it taste like you buy it from a shop, as a supermarket. Uh, because what you want to do is make it taste like almonds, you use ground almonds. Now, you can use a combination of ground almonds and flour, but I like to use all ground almonds for this one. So we're going to take a little bit of sugar and the butter, and we mix this together. And what we want to do is cream this together, really. So while that's creaming it together, hopefully, in the oven, I've got some cooking in here. These genuinely have been cooking. These are the ones that we're going to make. Nice. So these are the sort of... Because what you're looking for is this risen bit. Now, these are fresh out of the oven, super, super hot. But we want to make sure you get that lovely rise with it. And there's no baking powder in this. This is where we get this rise from, by mixing and mixing and mixing. And you almost cream this into it. It's nice and white. I'm just going to leave that to one side, because otherwise, if I put them there, you might just pick at them. <laughs> we'll, just pop, pop them, we'll pop them in there, and then gradually, 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 we can then 
once you've mixed this all together, you can see it's gone lovely and white now. It doesn't take very long. By hand, this takes forever, but you can see the colour changes and goes that nice and white. Then we can add the eggs, and you want to add the eggs one by one, one at a time, and keep mixing. Now, the mixture will split slightly. Don't worry about it. Most people panic. Just keep going. It doesn't matter. So the main thing is you've done the work before and you've mixed together that butter and the sugar enough. Six, six eggs. Six eggs, once we've got in there, because there's a decent amount, we're going to make plenty of this filling. In we go with the almonds. Now, because we have no flour, there's no reason to... There's, this is not going to toughen up when we beat it. So we can mix it again. And we get this beautiful, light frangipan. That way we don't add anything like uh, almond essence into that. You've got this beautiful light frangipan that's going to go brilliantly inside our nice little tartlets we've got in there. So that's that one. I'll just leave that to one side. Meanwhile, we've got our pastry, which is flour, butter, it's eggs and it's water. And I'm going to roll this out way for way for thin and line these little tartlets. But we talked earlier about your career bits and pieces. We failed to mention Gavin and Stacey, which we're going to touch on now because uh, we've been to What's Barry that? Island on this VT as well. We, I went there on the fairground ride and, and, and loved that. That was an amazing. That must have been an amazing thing to be a part of. But, you know, loads of people. Was. But even, even when you look at it now and the popularity when it came back and the millions and millions and millions of people that watched it, it's tempting that there's going to be more. Is there going to be more? Or would you like there to be more? Or I'd love it. I'd love it if there was more. But um, I've, people ask me all the time because people think, please, please bring it back. But I've no idea if we'll ever do any more. Um, it was just so great to do that Christmas special. Yeah. But you're still involved in comedy anyway, because you're bringing out something. Tell us about the new stuff, the new projects that you're yeah, doing Yeah, Yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, it's called Here We Go. Yeah. We did, a, we did a pilot episode, which was called Pandemonium. Right. And it was shown not this Christmas, Christmas before. And people seemed to really like it, so the BBC commissioned six more episodes, yeah. which was great. And, yeah, so, uh, yeah, we've got Catherine Parkinson, who's brilliant, and we've got Jim Howick... Yeah. ..who's <laughs> so funny. How I kept a straight face filming with him, <laughs> I'll never know. I used to have to say to him, Jim, please don't... ..please don't do that, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, yeah, so we've done six episodes, and it, I, it's still in edit, um, yeah. but I think it'll go out kind of May time. Right. But like I said, you've done all manner of different things. Uh, you, one of the things that I watched recently on TV was your, this travel thing that you did around the UK as well. That was that's been amazing. Um, yeah, yeah. The island was, travel. Oh, the islands, yeah, yeah, little British islands. Yeah, it was, yeah. That must have made amazing travel as well. And we both share the same passion, is that bird watching. Oh, I... To me, to me, I've got bird feeders all the time, you know, the back of my flat and at the front, and... If, I, if I'm having my breakfast yeah. and the feeder's empty and I go, oh, no, and I run out and fill the feeder because I like to... It's like friends, you know, yeah. popping in and I love to watch them and... It is amazing what you see just in the back garden, isn't it? It's just the, the stuff that keeps coming it's... in, the variety of stuff yeah. that keeps coming in as well. Absolutely. And I did the big garden bird watch. And it's such fun. You just sit for one hour, notepad, pen, yeah. and you just watch and write down every bird that you see, and it's... Yeah. Very relaxing, absolutely. Oh, yes. But, look, I wanted to show you these, cos I wanted to taste, taste these. I guess there's ingredients that come on the show, you just think, nah, I'm gonna, I can't wait to taste these. But I'm going to take some of these little cherries and just put a few of these in here. Now, you can, you can mix these all together if you want, you can blend them all up, but these cherries come from Italy. They are unbelievable. Oh, the stones taken out? The stones are taken out. All right. But they are just unbelievable. And these, with, whether you have them on their own... <laughs> and as my present to you, I'm going to give you a larger jar of those for you to Thank take you. up. Thank you. Thank you. Because I want you to try those. Because I think these are just unbelievable. You get this hit of cherry, and then you well. get this afterwards, you get this, what on earth is that? Mmm. Oh, yeah. How amazing are they? 
They're great. They're amazing, unbelievable, Ooh. aren't they? And it, you, you, you think, I've tasted lots of things and I've tasted lots of different sort of types of mm. fruits in, in jars and stuff like that, but their cherry is incredible. Mm. And they do strawberries as well, if you can get hold of them. They come from Italy, they're absolutely delicious. But look, you just pop that over the top and then you can keep these in the fridge. And the idea of keeping these in the fridge, you can actually freeze them as well. They freeze really well. Even to this stage, you take the whole lot, pop them in the freezer, let them defrost and then cook them. But by popping the fridge, you cook them when you need them because things like these, they want to be served warm. Uh, what you don't want to be doing is putting anything like this and putting it, cooking it and putting it in the fridge because uh, you want to serve it at room temperature. That's the key to it. So we've got our beautiful little bits of tartlet. Ooh. It's one to eat now, four to take home. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but look, you can just lift these off. They're, they're, it's cooked underneath. Look, maybe Mary Berry can check this out. Look. No soggy bottom. No soggy bottom, look, <laughs> underneath. All cooked all the way through, which is what that is. And then what you can do is you can take a little bit of the, the fruit that we've got in here and this beautiful cream we just take. And you've got to have equal quantities of sort of tartlet to cream, aren't you, really? Why not? <laughs> Why not? Be rude not to. And then we get these beautiful cherries. So I've put the cherries underneath as well. But then what we can do is we can just serve those Ooh. just on the top, oh, that looks on lovely. the side. And there we have it, a beautiful almond tartlet with these amazing cherries from Italy, served with a little bit of whipped cream. Bon appétit. Done. There we go. Dessert for you. Thank you. <laughs> bon appetit. <laughs> so what you do with this is you, I'll let you break into it. You've got a knife yeah. fork there. I'm just going to show okay. people at home that you've got this beautiful light sort of texture and that sort of lovely cherry inside. But if you put this in the fridge, it's kind of ruined, really. You want to serve this just room temperature or just warm out of the oven. That's when it's at its best, but with these cherries and mm. a little bit of cream. It's so light as well, because it looks what... like it might be quite heavy when yeah. you look at it, but it's not. If you put that in the fridge, it's a different thing altogether, but if you serve it and you cook it like that and it's served, it's still warm, warm. it is a different thing altogether, mm. but there you go. Mm. Wonderful. Well, that's it. That's all we've got time for today. A massive thank you to all my guests, Alicia Basie, uh, Romy Gill, Paul Ainsworth, and, of course, the fabulous Alison Steadman. Yeah. We'll see you back here at the same time next Saturday morning. We'll be joined by Chefs Jose Pizarro and Ronnie Murray. Music duo The Shires will be here and Joe Wicks. I'm in the gym training at the... ish, in a day or two. Uh, until then, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye for now.